Christmas to you all as we celebrate the birth of our Savior on today. Aren't you glad to be alive on this day? Isn't it a good day to praise and magnify the Lord? Hallelujah. We give God glory, we give honor, and we give God praise for all that he has done and what he's doing in our lives at this moment. Amen. And now we're going to go to the word of God. If you have your Bibles, if you would turn to Luke chapter 2, Luke chapter 2, and we're going to start with the first verse Luke chapter 2 beginning with verse 1 and I will be reading from the New International Version of the Bible in those days Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world this was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria and everyone went to their own town to register so Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house in line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no room in the inn. 
If I were to have a topic for today, my topic would be make room. Let us pray. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. God, we give your name glory, we give your name honor, and we give your name praise. God, we come to worship and magnify you on today. And God, I ask that as I preach this word, that you anoint me afresh, God. Anoint my mind, my heart, and my spirit, God. Take out any and everything that's not like you, God. And God, pour your spirit upon me. God, I ask that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight. For you are my strength and my redeemer. And God, I ask that you bless those that hear this word, God. For you said in your word that your word would not return void. And God, I ask that this be a word of encouragement, upliftment, and inspiration. In Jesus' name, amen. Has there ever been a time in your life when you felt as if you were an afterthought? A time when no one paid attention to you or had any time for you. A time when you felt ignored or pushed aside. You didn't receive any telephone calls or texts, no DMs, tweets, or Facebook messages. You call or text your friends and you either get no response or they're too busy to talk. And as humans, we all long for attention. Some of us long for popularity or the spotlight. And some want it by any means necessary. We try to fit in or be a part of the crowd in order to feel like we are a part of something. That's why a lot of us join social clubs, sororities, fraternities, or other groups. And I do not believe that there is anyone who wants to feel unwanted or alone. We all want to feel that we are important. We want someone to make us a priority, to make us feel wanted and appreciated. For someone to give us a pat on the back. As parents, we want to feel appreciated by our children. As children, we want to feel appreciated by our parents. As wives, we want to feel appreciated by our husbands. And husbands want to feel appreciated by their wives. As employees, we want to feel appreciated by our employers. And employers want to feel appreciated by our employees. Everyone, in some shape, form, or fashion, wants to feel wanted, needed, and appreciated. And in this season of giving, we feel that even more. We try to purchase gifts for our family and friends to show them how special they are to us. We cook lavish dinners and have social gatherings to fellowship with the ones that we love and care for. We decorate our homes and trees to fill the spirit of the holiday and to await jolly old St. Nick on this day. But in all of this, as wonderful and festive this time of year is, someone is being overlooked. Someone is being pushed aside. Someone is being unappreciated, not paid attention to, and feels unwanted. And Luke and I have stopped by to tell you that it's not about the presents you receive from others on today, but it's about the gift of the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. I don't know about you today, but there is no greater gift in the world than Jesus. For without his birth, there could not be his death and resurrection wherein we are saved. And I thank God for today, and I hope you thank God for this day. For on this day, 
we celebrate the birth of our Savior, the birth of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the birth of Emmanuel, God with us, the birth of the wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, the birth of Jesus Christ. And for that, we give God praise. For that, we give God honor. And for that, we give God glory. Hallelujah. So as you go about the hustle and bustle of your day, my challenge to you is to make room for Jesus. So how do we do that? I'm glad you asked. Let's look at the text. It's around 6 or 5 BC where Luke sets up this scene. Everyone is ordered by the emperor Caesar Augustus to go to the area of their ancestors to be counted in the census. We see Joseph preparing to leave for Bethlehem to participate in the census. Not only does he have the task of packing for the trip, but caring for his nine-month, fully pregnant fiance, Mary. The trip is a long 90 to 100 mile walk from Nazareth to Bethlehem, which will take them approximately eight to 10 days to travel. They'll have to walk through the heavily forested valley of the Jordan River with the dangers of lions, bears, and wild boars. Not only that, but the possibility of facing bandits, pirates of the desert, and robbers as they travel along the various routes they have to take in order to get to their destination. This had to be a scary experience for them. Any woman that's been pregnant could sympathize with Mary. Traveling on a donkey, nine months pregnant, ready to deliver at any time, uncomfortable, tired, restless, and most likely irritable. I can imagine that while they were traveling, she was thinking about everything she has endured throughout her pregnancy. Being a young, engaged, teenage virgin, pregnant with a baby, no doubt her mind went back to the visitation from the angel, Gabriel, telling her that she was highly favored by God, chosen to be the mother of the Messiah, the Holy One. She faced excitement versus fear. Excitement of being a mother to an extraordinary child anointed by God to save the world and fearful of being young and not pregnant by her intended Joseph, but by the Holy Spirit. No doubt she had to face the public's view and the opinion of the community. Who would believe that she was divinely pregnant? She was probably shunned, ostracized, and of course, the town's latest gossip. Everywhere she went, there were eyes looking at her and people talking about her. Then you have Joseph, a righteous man, a carpenter, known in the Nazareth community for his workmanship and his relationship with God. Despite the rumors and talks, he continued to stay engaged to Mary. For he knew the great gift that she was carrying. But being human, he may have had some doubts and confusion about this whole ordeal. What am I going to do? What will people think of me? Think of us? All of these thoughts probably penetrated their minds while traveling the long road to Bethlehem. But once they arrived at their destination, no hotel was available. They were tired, hungry, sleepy, no room. 
but I have a pregnant fiance. Her water just broke. She's ready to deliver. No room. What, what are we going to do? Where are we going to go? We, we need help. Sorry. No room. Now they must resort to a cave. Not the ideal place for a king to be born. No comforts of a hotel or even a home birth. Born in a dark, smelly cave with animals. Wrapped in strips of cloth lying in a manger. All because Bethlehem had no room and no time for Jesus. Isn't it a sad commentary when we have room for everything else and not Jesus? We make room for family. We make room for friends. We make room to watch football games, TV shows, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter. But do we make room for Jesus? Is he first on your list or have you pushed him aside for later use? Is he the first thing on your mind or is it someone or something else? I submit to you today, if we are honest, we all have had our moments of not having time or room for Jesus and putting things and others before him. So today, I have three little points on how we can start making room for Jesus. Number one, we have to stop focusing on the superficial and focus on the Savior. Even though Joseph's trip was for him to be counted in the census, he took Mary with him. With everything Joseph had going on, his focus was on her well-being and the baby. And just as Joseph focused on Jesus, so should we. We all know that 2020 has been a year for the record books. Indeed, it's been a year of uncertainty, loss, and hurt. Some of us are suffering with depression, fear, and anxiety. Some of us are frustrated, angry, and scared. Some of us are confused and feel hopeless. But remember that even though we are going through, we must keep our focus on the Savior. There is still hope in Jesus Christ. For the Bible says that weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. We are more than conquerors through him that love us. And no weapon formed against us shall prosper. There is no failure in him. And is that someone's testimony today? I may not have friends. I may have lost loved ones, but thank God I'm still here. I may not feel my best, but I have the activity of my limbs. I have health and I have strength. I may not have a lot of money, but thank God I still have a roof over my head. I have heat I have food, I have clothes, and my bills are paid. I may not have what I want, but thank God I have all that I need. I may not have the best car, but thank God he blessed me with a car. I may not have the best job, but thank God he blessed me with a job. I may have the, I may not have the best of everything, but God gave me the best. Because I have Jesus. And if you're glad that you have Jesus today, you ought to lift your hands right where you are and give him a praise. Praise him. Tell him thank you for protecting me. Thank you for keeping me. Thank you for healing me. Thank you for providing for me. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your peace. God, thank you for your love. Thank you for your joy. 
For if it had not been for you, where would we be? Yes, you may have problems. Yes, things may not look good right now. Yes, there may be obstacles in front of you. But move your focus off the superficial, the negative, and what's presented in front of you and focus on the Savior. For the songwriter said to ask the Savior to help you. Comfort, strengthen, and keep you. He is willing to aid you. Jesus will. Oh, Jesus will carry you through. So whatever you're going through, keep your eyes on Jesus. Not only do we have to keep our focus on Jesus, but we have to remember the promise and the reason for his birth. When Mary gave birth to Jesus, she gave, ba gave birth to the promise prophesied over 700 years ago. Throughout the Old Testament, there were prophecies given concerning the birth of Jesus. But in Matthew 1, Gabriel's words to Joseph rings true for Jesus' birth. For he will save his people from their sins. We must make room because he saved us. Is there anybody glad today that he saved you? Did he deliver you? Did he pick you up? Did he turn you around and place your feet on solid ground? Did he make ways out of no ways? Did he protect you from danger seen and unseen? And when we were out doing our own thing, not paying attention to him, not even thinking about him, he still kept us. And even now, He's still keeping us. And I don't know about you, but I'm grateful that he kept me. I'm glad he was born to save me. I'm glad he was born to deliver me. For when I feel down, I remember the promise of Jesus. When I feel unworthy, I remember the promise of Jesus. When doubt tries to set in, I remember the promise of Jesus. When I don't know which way to go, I remember the promise of Jesus. When I can't see my way, I remember the promise of Jesus. When trouble is all around, I remember the promise of Jesus. But not only do I remember the promise that he saved us, but that he's Emmanuel, God with us. And isn't that good news today that Jesus is with us? He said that he'll never leave us. Or forsake us in every problem, in every situation, he's right there. Through this pandemic, he's still with us. Through loss, he's still with us. Through dark times, he's still with us. Through pain and heartache, he's still with us. Through suffering, He's still with us. Through tests and trials, he's still with us. Through loneliness, he's still with us. God is always with us. Can I get a witness? Does somebody know on this live that God is with them? For Jesus said that, lo, I am always with you, even until the end of the world. And since he's with us, let me add one more point. After you stop focusing on the superficial and focus on the Savior, and you remember the promise, three, you got to give God the praise. You have to praise him for the gift. For Psalms 150 says to praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his acts of power. Praise him for his surpassing greatness. Praise him with the sounding of the trumpet. Praise him with the harp and lyre. Praise him with timbrel and dancing. Praise him with the strings and pipe. Praise him with the clash of cymbals. Praise him with resounding cymbals. Let everything that have breath 
Praise the Lord. So can you give God a praise? Right where you are, can you give him a praise? Can you give him a hallelujah? Can you give him a thank you, Jesus? Can you give him a Lord, I love you? For he's opened doors that no man could open. He's made ways that no one could make. He's healed your body. He's blessed your family. He's protected your children. He's blessed your finances. He kept you from going crazy. And for that, we have to give him praise. We have to give him glory. We have to give him honor. For as good as God has been to me, I can't afford not to praise his name. For I got a reason to praise the Lord. For he's El Shaddai, Lord God Almighty. He's El El Yon, the Most High God. He's El Olam, the Everlasting God. He's Yahweh, Lord God Jehovah. For he's Jehovah Jireh, my provider. He's Jehovah Nisi, the Lord my banner. He's Jehovah Shalom, the Lord of peace. He's Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals. He's Jehovah Ra'a, the Lord my shepherd. He's Jehovah Shama, the Lord who is always there. He's Jehovah Tiskanu, the Lord my righteousness. But most of all, he's Jesus, the chosen one. Jesus, my savior and my Lord. Jesus, my master. Jesus, my ruler. Jesus, the word of God. Jesus, the son of God. Jesus, the lamb of God. Jesus, the light of the world. Jesus, the king of the Jews. Jesus, the lily of the valley. Jesus, the bright and morning star. Jesus, the sweetest name I know. His name is Jesus, and he's everything we need and more. So why not make room for him? And on today, we challenge you, Luke and I challenge you, to make room for the Savior. Today, as we celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, let us move everything out of the way and make room for him. Yes, it's wonderful to give and receive gifts, but on today, what great what greater gift could we ever receive than the gift of Jesus Christ God wrapped him in the perfect wrapping to present to us on this day for this day in the city of David a savior is born Wise men seek him. Angels worship him. Shepherds visit him. Gifts are given to him. But he is the gift that God has given to us. So on today, on this Christmas day, if someone who's listening either on Facebook Live or on YouTube. If you don't know him, God has given you the perfect gift of him today. Come and receive this gift, the gift of Jesus Christ. What love for his people that God has that he would give his only son to save us, to deliver us, to love us. And on today, he's waiting for you to receive him. Why don't you receive him on today? God, we thank you for your word. 
we thank you for the challenge that you've given us to make room for Jesus. Not only today, but every day that we live to move everything out of the, out of the way and make room for Jesus. God, we thank you for giving us this gift to save us, to deliver us, to set us free. And God, we love you on today for loving us enough to give us your son. And God, as we go throughout our day, we make room for you. We honor you. We magnify you. We glorify you. And we lift your name. For your name is worthy to be praised. And God, I ask on today that you touch everyone that's viewing this Facebook Live and YouTube broadcast. God, I ask that you touch their homes, touch their families, cover, protect, and keep them, God. Continue to provide for them. Continue to be their helper. Continue to love them and care for them. God, I ask that whatever they need on today, that you grant their request. If it's healing, if it's deliverance, if it's salvation, I ask that you grant it on today. God, I thank you for the opportunity to preach your word. And God, I thank you for this church, the Ebenezer Baptist Church and Pastor Palmer Bunty. God, I ask you bless this ministry, God, and continue to allow them to walk in the calling and in the ministry that you have for them. God, again, we just want to say that we love you. We give you glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. We thank you for just being with us on today. And if you would like to sow into this ministry, look up Ebenezer Baptist Church on Giftify and on Cash App. We know that we are to sow seeds. And why not sow your seed in fertile ground? Sow into this ministry so they can continue to do the ministry that God has called them to do. We thank you for watching again. And I ask that you enjoy your day. Have a Merry Christmas. And remember to make room for Jesus. God bless. Oh, <laughs>